Okay, so let's get started again. I'm sorry about that. Um, I was trying this on YouTube Live, but it, I'm having a difficulty trying to screencast. So we're going to do this a different way. We'll screencast it through this way. So this patient was presented with, uh, she was getting a restoration completed with another provider, and this patient is anesthetized, and we decided to start the endo at this time. But just a little bit of background, background, they removed this restoration. This blue is just methylene blue dye. And this is me putting opal dam in here. And actually, uh, another student was asking me a question, so I was just pointing out the crack. And so methylene blue dye, and now that highlights where the crack is. So on the x-ray, it's really crazy because you can see, I don't have it here, you can see actually in the PA, there's a crack buccal lingual, which you never see. It's usually mesial distal. So that's why I kind of wanted to post this case because it's really exciting. I mean, it's kind of goofy, but it's really exciting. So normally what would happen, my experience has been, you know, maybe 15 years ago when I just got started, I'd aim for these to do the root canal. And we're doing the root canal because the nerve, the pulp chamber is like literally right there. So let's fast forward here. Uh, so I'm going to place opal dam. This is critical, super critical. It should be crit You should be using a rubber dam. I'm huge into rubber dams. That's standard of care. So what we're going to do is I'm just poking there to see if there's any access. And now what I'm doing here, so let's hit play. I'm going to use this Munzburr. It's really an amazing tool. So it's essentially a number one round burr in surgical length, but it's got a really long shank. And what happens is this allows me to keep the head of the handpiece out of the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trough from the mesobuccal cusp to the, to the palate, just a line along there, and actually where that gray piece, that dark piece was, and that's really where the pulp chamber is. So then you can start to see the, the pulp horn start to pop out here, and I'm going to get right into it. So you can see how close we were to the, the pulp chamber. And honestly, this patient would have been in a lot of pain afterwards. And her symptoms were very simple. Cold sensitivity before this restoration was removed, and it was removed because there, were, there was decay around it. So she still had cold sensitivity uh, prior to uh, being anesthetized for, um, to remove the filling. And like I said, this... I was just walking down. The, actually, the dental assistant came and grabbed me and said, uh, there's a huge crack in this tooth. And looking at the radiograph, which I'll post later, it's crazy. But uh, I wanted to give this patient a little more time to be able to decide what we're going to do. So let's get her out of potential pain because she's going to be super sore afterwards if we didn't do the endo. So normally what I do is I use a non-cutting tip burr. Uh, but here I'm just using the, the Munzburr just to kind of trough because there's not a lot of tooth structure to trough. I mean, it's pretty minimal, like a millimeter. Let's fast forward here. And so what I'm going to do here is actually I switched out because it was going a little bit slow. I couldn't find my usual endo Z burr or pulp shaper burr. So I just use a, a really fine diamond burr. And that's another way you can do it. I was thinking as I was doing this, like, oh, I can cut this video and show people that there's another technique, just use a fine diamond, nice, and there's that little dentin shelf, if I can see MB2 right up front, pretty quick, but I couldn't see anything, so we're gonna do a big rinse. You may hear a whole bunch of people eating lunch next door. So the first thing I do, so we're into most of the pulp chamber, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my wave on gold and I'm gonna orifice open. And uh, just for the head, for, for giggles, I got the, uh, the pelletal nerve out, so let's just look at that under high power. <laughs> just to show my dental assistant through my computer screen. So let's keep going here. So what I do is I take my wave on gold to 16 millimeters, which is the cutting flutes. So I take that to a, a reference point and that opens up the, the coronal two thirds. It's such a fast way of cleaning and shaping the three main canals right away. So you're not fooling around at all. So we're gonna do that to all the canals. We'll fast forward here. We're gonna rinse it out. And now what we have is we have, uh, let's see here. We've just got a bunch of, a little bit of pulp tissue remaining. We've got our mesobuccal canal, mesobuccal cusp, our distal buccal cusp, and there's the can mesobuccal canal, distal buccal canal, and the palatal canal. And then we're gonna take a number six file and start getting to length. And there's actually an apical, cal apical calcification or apical curve on this. Uh, and get around that. That's a secret I'm going to hold on and talk about later. But one of the big things we're going to I really wanted to talk about was troughing for that MB2. So one of the things that when you're troughing for MB2, so if this is the MB, the mesobuccal root, and here's the access opening, 
there's this little mesial lip covering the or MB orifice. It's always like that, okay? So watch for that in this video right here. So you might hear me talking to my dental assistant. So I did more troughing, and what I was troughing for, this is the start of my troughing procedure. After we've cleaned and shaped those main canals, I'm like, okay, there's hypochlorite sitting. There's hypochlorite sitting in those canals, so it's degrading the tissue. And what I'm going to do is I'm troughing along this mesial wall for MB2. So I'm usually looking for approximately 1 millimeter, 1.8 millimeters, whatever that might be, away from the mesial buccal 1 canal. But there's also another tip that I was taught. So it's just dry. And then what I did was I said, oops, because when I moved my irrigating needle syringe, I actually got some, this, we need some opal dam. So we're going to put opal dam here um, to seal that up because that should have been sealed. So one of the tips that I was taught, uh, let me screen capture this. I'll take this over to my, we'll take that to here. We'll put that in there. Is to... This is your mesial buccal cusp, this is distal buccal cusp, and this is a palate. What we can do is, and we'll use an arrow, is if we draw a line from the palate to the mesial buccal cusps, maybe like that, something like that. So there's that. And if you draw a line that's perpendicular from the distal buccal orifice to, so if it's a right, right angle, to this, so the mesial buccal cusp, palatal cusp, so you draw a straight line, and if you intersect it or bisect this line from the distal buccal, you should be looking approximately here, roughly, for your for your MB2. That's a rough guide, and that's worked actually many many times. So that's what I'm doing here, is I'm looking around that area. Let's see here, she's curing that. We're looking around that area. We're cleaning, shaping more and more and more. Okay, here we go. All right, so now we're looking, boom, oops. Let's back that up just a little bit right there. So live examples are great, but non-live and just recently done and we can back and go back and forth. So here's, a, you know, say if this is the line here, it's right about there. But watch this little dot right there. So I'm looking, just the buckle, and then I, what I'm doing is I'm following I'm following the developmental grooves, and I didn't see anything here, so I'm like, okay, well, it's got to be in here somewhere. I'm following the developmental grooves, and boom. Right there. That's the apex locator dying. So, that's where MB2 is. So, I'm just holding it in there to show my dental system. All right, let's get a little bit more higher power. Yeah, so you can see it's right there. It's like all... So that's it right there, right next to the developmental groove. It's nowhere near the, the tip that I was talking about. But what we need to do is don't stick a file in there. That's the worst thing you could do because what's going to happen is that the your file is going to go straight into like that. So what happens is your file goes in. Your file comes kind of like this. It comes down like that and then it can't make that bend. So it goes straight. Like that kind of. So your file goes straight in like that and then it doesn't make this curve. And what happens is you jam more and more bigger files in. It doesn't go around the corner. So what you need to do is trough that out. White. What does trough that out mean? I need, to, I need, I need to, to remove this lip of dentin. So this white lip of dentin is actually this right here. It's this. This right here is actually this material right there. So you need to trough that out. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our, and you're going to see a white dot. There it is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just troughing. It's essentially just lightly touching, if you may. There's a white dot. That's the canal. And I'm moving it more mesial. And I could remove more of this, but I wanted to preserve some tooth structure in this tooth. Because I know we can get around that bend. There it is. Boom, there's MB2. Isn't that cool? So what happens is it started here, and then as we slowly troughed, it went there. And the reason why is that because this is where the dot was, and as we remove all of this, now you get a more straighter line of access. But even you'll see it's even more, it's still bent, 
when I take my six files. So, and you're always worried. I'm not worried anymore. But you know, when I initially started doing this, you're always worried about perfect. Oh, trust me, I'm mean, thinking about it. So I'm going to keep moving out more mesial. I'm going to rinse it out. And then what we're going to do, so you can see it there, I'm going to touch it with my Explorer. Yes, it sticks. And then I'm going to take my six file, and you can see that ant bend on that bad boy. So what I'm going to do now, so it's in there. Trying to get some air. Get under high power. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to watch wind a little bit, pull out, watch wind a little bit, pull out, and then I'm going to take it. You could you could super argue that this is actually a wrong technique, to be honest. What you could do is actually remove this. I want to preserve this because we've got a bit of a crack here. I think we'll be able to save this tooth with a full cuspal restoration. But there's no probing depths, and that's why we're going down this road. But I want to preserve this dent in here rather than blowing it out. But in uh, textbooks, you could argue this is the wrong way to do it because your file is still making a bend to get down the root. So I'm going to open up with an eight, just a little bit of pecking motion, hand filing. Uh, and then I'm going to open up with a 10. But I'm not going very far into the canal. You can see here it's very short. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to open up space you know, you know we'll do to we'll my cutting flutes. So same thing, just a little bit. I'm not trying to jam it. I'm just getting a little bit of... I'm just trying to use a little bit of opening space. I'll pull it out. Uh, or name I send you the or watch you wind it back mm -hmm. in. Pull it out, and then that's it. And then we'll rinse again. And same thing, so we'll go 6, 8, 10. Oh, no. 6, 8, 10, and oh, we're going to slowly make our way all the way down the canal. Let's see how far I went off this picture. 8, so you can see we're going to be getting a little bit further down the canal. And then let's go to final C shape. So now we're back to our six. That's a good. So you can see here, now I've got, we're down almost to the cutting flutes. And these other canals are 18 millimeters. So I know I'm within, so that's like seven. This is 16 millimeters. I'm at 17 millimeters. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to open, I'm going to open up the chrome two thirds. I'm going to go even better view. And then same over here. There, so. It's so exciting when you find MB2 and you can actually get into it. So I'm just talking about getting, looking for it with my demo assistant. So we're tracking down more and more and more down that. So I'm happy with that. And next is just to slowly work my way with, I'm going to open up the orifice a little bit with the, with the wave on gold primary. Ah, oh, when I was a view of the camera, darn it. Anyways, this is more about troughing. And then we're trying to tackle the equal third, and then let's get a last final picture. So we got the troughing down, we got wave on gold, so this is what we got. So we got wave on gold down to working length. I just used the primary, and this is it. So there's, it's MB2. So you see where we started and where it ends up. It's crazy, the difference. And then we're going to find, look at our, that's our MB canal right there. It's hidden underneath there, you can't really see it. That's our distal buckle. And that's our palatal canal. So what I'm looking for here, this is actually the reason why we started this endo is because on the x-ray, and I'll post it, there's a huge crack that goes down right to the top of the orifice here. So you could, you know, my question is, what do you think? Would you take it out? There are no probing depths. This patient had no sensitivity to biting. Actually, it was reversible pulpitis. My concern was um, after this restoration would have been placed, we, before the endo, it would have been extremely painful for her. And we, should, we would have been doing the endo anyways because you can see we're super close. So, you know, would you preserve this tooth or would you extract it? So you can get a, there we go. Now we're down, magnification, higher mag. That's MB2. And then we'll look at that crack again. So there it is. You can get better. Right there, there goes the crack right there. I mean, I don't think there's a, I think, um, we're going to try to save it and then follow up. But there's, I'm really curious to know what clinicians are doing today with these. They're just taking them out. So we're going to put some calcium hydroxide to pump it up and down the canals. And then that's it. So hopefully that was helpful talking about MB2 troughing. I really, I really apologize. I started on YouTube Live. It didn't work. Uh, but now we've got to post it back up. We'll talk to you soon, Ash. Okay, so let's get started again. I'm sorry about that. 
Um, I was trying this on YouTube Live, but it, it, I'm having a difficulty trying to screencast. So we're going to do this a different way. We'll screencast it through this way. So this patient was presented with uh, she was getting a restoration completed with another provider, and this patient is anesthetized, and we decided to start the endo at this time. But just a little bit of background, background, they removed this restoration. This blue is just methylene blue dye, 